Recent studies show that eight in ten men will endure an illness rather than seek medical help, while more than a third feel too embarrassed to go to the doctor. But could your man's minor health issues actually be a sign of something more serious? Well, men's health specialist Dr Amir Khan joins us now with some important advice. Good morning to you. Morning. Thank you for joining Hi. us Hi. this morning. So, as we just said there, eight in ten men would choose to endure an illness rather than seek help. A lot of people put this down to the fact that they're too embarrassed to speak about their health problems. You say there is no need to feel embarrassed. There's absolutely no need to feel embarrassed. You know, a lot of my consultations in general practice with men start off with, well, I wasn't really worried about this, but my wife or partner told me to come in. Okay. Uh, it's probably nothing. And then I always follow that up with, tell me what they were worried about then. And often that uncovers their concerns right. rather than their wife or, yeah, or partners. Yeah. But there is really no reason to be embarrassed. You know, we've seen it all before. We want to see you for these things because often what might be perceived as a simple problem can be something very serious. Okay. And something that quietly has been keeping you awake all night could be sorted pretty quickly. Absolutely. And the earlier we see these things, the more effective treatment usually is. Well, we're going to go down the body now. We're going yes. to start, first of all, with, uh, with the head. Yes. So we're going to do a bit of a systematic approach here. So we'll start with, with the head. And I thought we'd go with memory problems, mm -hmm. first of all, because often, male or female, really, people are worried about their memory and they're worried about being diagnosed with dementia and what that can bring with it. You know, the lack of the loss of independence, perhaps they might lose their driver's license, that kind of thing. But actually, memory problems, it, it's not just exclusive uh, to older people. It can start as early as 60, perhaps even sooner. But it does need investigating. Come and see us because it may not be dementia. There's lots of reversible causes of memory issues. So things like vitamin deficiencies, B12, folic acid, iron deficiency can cause it, an underactive thyroid. So if you were to come and see me mm. with your memory problem, I'd, you know, be, I'd talk to you about it, get some of the questions out of the way. What kind of things are you forgetting? How long has it been going on for? But the first port of call is blood tests and looking at your heart health as well, because sometimes tiny little strokes, which you may have no other symptoms for, you won't have any weakness, you won't have any speech problems, can cause memory problems. And we can look at all of that. It doesn't have to be Alzheimer's dementia causing your memory problems. All right, let's move down the body a bit and talk mm. about a cough then, a persistent cough. Well, there's a lot going on here in the throat. So three weeks is the magic number. So if you've had a sore throat, a hoarse voice, or a persistent cough for three weeks or more, you really should come and see mm -hmm. your, your, your GP. And again, I'm saying it's about men because they're less likely to come in, but it applies to females as yeah. well. Uh, and that, you know, a hoarse voice, you may not have noticed that, but someone else may have noticed it. Uh, again, a sore throat, you may have put it down to a viral infection, but most viral infections sort themselves out within three weeks, particularly if you're smokers, not exclusively, but es especially if you are a smoker. Uh, a hoarse voice or a sore throat could be a sign of throat throat cancer. Persistent cough, again, lung cancer. A hoarse voice, not only uh, throat cancer, it can be a sign of lung cancer. You could have a cancer sitting on the top of your lung here, which presses on your nerve that goes to your voice box and gives you a hoarse voice. So these things, wow. minor, but could be major. Right, and okay. something that you want to jump on pretty quickly. Absolutely. The earlier, the better. Um, right, let's move down a little bit further into mm. chest pain. Yes. So we, we all know that men are at higher risk of cardiovascular disease than women. And there's lots of reasons for that. Women have oestrogen as a protective factor. Men deposit fat differently and, and they are at higher risk as a result. Uh, and typically, people worry about kind of left-sided chest pain going down their arm up into their jaw. But it doesn't have to be typical for it to be cardiovascular chest pain. If if you're walking, going to the shops, at the supermarket, and you get a little niggle in your chest, usually it's described as a heavy sensation. And you sit down and it goes away and you think, oh, well, that was nothing. I won't need to worry about that. Mm. You do need to worry about that because exertional chest pain can be a sign of something called angina, where the coronary arteries, which should be nice and open, are clogged up with fat uh, or other bits and pieces. Uh, and it it, it, it restricts the blood flow to the heart. So when you when you are exerting yourself, your heart needs a bit more food and oxygen. It can't get it. So it says, right, sit down and rest. And that's when we need to see you, really. And the people who are at higher risk of this are South Asian and Afro-Caribbean people. So, or if you've got a family history as well. So anything to do with the chest, straight into yeah, your GP, and, please. Yeah, and I know we've targeted this at men, but women have really yeah. atypical chest pain. They don't necessarily get that. They might get back pain. They might get neck pain. So, so if you're a woman and you've got niggly pain, 
campaigns around that area. Please do come Is and see right? us as well. Yeah. All right, let's move down a little bit further and mm. we're going to talk about indigestion now. Yes, another thing that people consider minor, but yeah. this is an age thing. If you are over 55 and you've got new symptoms of indigestion, don't just pop down to the chemist and get some Gaviscon. Uh, go and see your GP because if you've got new in onset indigestion, 55 or over, it could be stomach or food pipe esophageal cancer. So we need to see you. Okay. Um, what about a change in bowel habits? Yeah, really important. If you're 60 or over and you've had a change in bowel habits, whether that's looser or constipated, uh, we need to see you. Now, it used to be if your change in bowel habits has been going on for six weeks or more, but they've taken that out of the guidance now. Any change in bowel habits, any length of time, over the age of 60, men or women, come and see your GP. OK, all right. And then when you go and see your GP, what, what do they do? What do they investigate? Because yeah. I think people worry. The other thing about sort of this area of their body is that people then go, right, what are the investigations going to be? Gonna because do? this is going to be quite yeah. personal and I'm worried about that. And that puts people off. The, the, the main thing most doctors make their uh, diagnosis or theories based on is the history. So a lot of it is just talking to right. the patient. So most of the consultation will be talking. Yes, we need to examine you, but the mainstay is the history. Yeah. So we'll have a feel of your tummy. Uh, and if needed, we might need to do a rectal examination. And again, nothing to worry nothing about. Nothing to worry it's about. Like you've got to get your head in the place. Where you go. This is. I'm with a doctor now. This is medical. Yeah. This is could save my life. I'm just gonna get on with it. And interestingly, when I do a rectal examination, which I, I do every single day, you know, several. Uh, they always apologise to me for putting me through it. And I'm like, oh. no, no, honestly, I've done at least five of these today already, so don't worry yeah. about me. Yeah. And uh, then they always say, well, I'll come back later after a wash. I don't care. Just right. do it now. Get it done. Yeah. Get I've it got done. gloves, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what, so what about, that's why we shook your hand. Yeah. Um, what, about, uh, what about erectile dysfunction? Right, OK, so this is something that men can feel embarrassed about coming to, but it is really important. And when men come in to talk to us about erectile dysfunction at any age, we try and separate them into two camps. So could it be psychological? Could it be physical? And we do ask some personal questions here, but again, it's just between you and the GP. So the kind of things we we need to ask really is are you still getting morning erections are you able to masturbate to climax but then do you go on to have problems with your partner with performance if the answers to those first two questions is yes uh, and then yes again for the third one because um, because you are having difficulty with morning erections, masturbation and the partner, chances are this is a physical problem. It right. could be a sign of cardiovascular disease because the little blood vessels in the penis are tiny, they're first to get clogged up and that could be a sign that other blood vessels to your heart might be clogged up as well. So it's we need... quite clever, the body, really, it's isn't it? Brilliant. It gives it's you great. these warning signs yeah, for yeah. something more serious. Absolutely. You just need to listen to them. Yeah, if you're, having trouble, if you're not having trouble sorry, with morning erections and masturbation but you are with your partner, then it's more likely to be psychological anxiety related. We can and point you in the right direction there as well. Just while we're down there, we have to think about the testicles as well. Really common cancer in under 40. The earlier that's picked up, the better as well. Treatment is really, really good for testicular cancer. So if you've got a lump, if you've got a funny sensation, if anything's changed in your testicular area, Go and get yourself and checked out. And the only out. way you're going to know if something's changed is to regularly check. Yes. Know your own Regular testicles. check. Regular checks. Really important. After a shower. It's usually the best bit. After warm water softens the scrotal sac, it's easier to check. All right. Mm. Uh, urinary issues. Yes. So another problem in men, uh, one of the most common cancers over the age of 40 is prostate cancer in men. And the prostate is a little gland. It sits at the base of the penis. Uh, and if it gets larger, for whatever reason, it can obstruct the flow of urine out of mm -hmm. the bladder and it can give you problems with your stream of urine. So typically, when you go and pass water, you have to push harder to get it out. You might, might come out in dribs and drabs or you might might dribble afterwards as well. Now, people do think about prostate cancer with this and that makes them worried about coming to see the GP because they don't want to be diagnosed with it. Mm. But there are far more common causes of prostate problems. Something called benign prostatic hypertrophy, which is happens to most men as they get older, the prostate naturally gets bigger uh, and it can obstruct the flow of urine. And there's lots of things that we can do, either advice, tablets that will help that. It doesn't, we have to rule out prostate cancer, it's really important, but it doesn't necessarily mean you've got prostate cancer. Okay. And finally, Circulation. Yes. So we're moving down a little bit now to the legs, hopefully. Yes, there, there we, we go. Uh, so circulation in the <laughs> legs, really important. Again, if you're going out for walks, uh, whether you're a keen walker and you feel, oh, I can't walk as much as I used to because I'm getting pain in the back of my calves, or again, you're taking your stairs or going up hills, you're getting pain in the back of your calves and you have to sit down to relieve that pain, that's a condition called intermittent claudication. And what that means is 
blood flow down to your legs may not be as good as what it used to be. Uh, and again, it could be a sign of cardiovascular disease elsewhere. So we need to see you. The only thing we'll do there is feel the pulses in your pulse, in, in your feet, sorry. Uh, and then we might refer you for a jelly scan of uh, an ultrasound scan of the pulses. That is it. Uh, so really simple. All these things we've targeted them at men, but again, can apply to ladies yeah. as well. But really important to come and see is they might seem like minor things, but we can either sort them out or point you in the right direction. Yeah. Thank you very that much. That was very good. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you.